All right, there we go. And so now we have both recordings going. Okay, let's get started. So news events, so uh, we had a bank holiday yesterday for the yen. So it was somewhat weak, but we didn't uh, see any, may, any of the major currencies overtake it too badly. Uh, today, oh, I'm sorry, I need to refresh this. Let's see here. Now we did have Australian dollar news come out last night. We'll take a look at the charts to see how that, uh, that rate statement it affected the, the loonie. We always want to look at rate statements. They have a big impact on uh, economies. We had a little bit of Euro, a little bit of CAD news that just came out. Trade balance came out for the CAD, so we'll see how that's uh, affecting it. Uh, later today, we've got primary manufacturing numbers coming in for non-manufacturing sectors coming in at nine o'clock for the U.S. dollar, so that's going to be in about an hour and a half. And then we'll keep in mind we have NZD unemployment numbers coming out um, later into the in the uh, Tokyo session in the next session. So if we enter any NZD pairs, we need to know about that. Uh, and uh, again, I guess it's a it's a uh, another bank holiday day. So it looks like they're getting like a four day weekend here in Japan. So we'll keep that in mind if we look at any yen pairs. Let's go ahead and start looking at the actual currencies now. The dollar, as we've been talking about, has been on a steady, steady, steady decline due to obviously the pandemic and the effect that it's having on the U.S. economy. Well, sure enough, as states start opening back up and prematurely, in my opinion, by allowing people to go back to their daily lives, it's sparking optimism in the, in the dollar. And so we're seeing it rally back on up. So as we had a full week of bearish movement. Yesterday was consolidation, and today we're seeing a spike of strength in the dollar. So we need to keep that in mind. Now, this happened during the London session. So not sure what came out that sparked the strengthening of the dollar in the London session, but we'll take a look at how the other pairs are reacting to that. Again, we don't need to know what happened exactly. We just need to react to it accordingly. Very, very, very simple. Okay. All right, let's take a look at our currencies. Looks like a little bit of ranging. What we're looking for are big moves or sustained trends. Now here's sustained trend uh, against the Swiss franc, the Audi. Um, I don't know if this was, again, fueled by the news that came out last night. Uh, well, it was yesterday. Yesterday morning, obviously, if you were in that side of the world. But the Australian dollar seems to be moving well against the franc, uh, not so much against the yen or the US dollar, okay? So that might equate more to a Swiss franc being weak than the Australian dollar being strong. As we see here, the Canadian dollar also overtaking the Swiss franc. So again, it just takes about five minutes to do in the morning, but it gives you a better perspective on what's strong, what's weak as you head into the market. Again, you want to know um, the terrain before you go into battle. Okay, a lot of bearish movement on franc yen. Okay, Australian dollar. Oh, yeah, not so much the Australian dollar, but the euro. Very, very weak. So we're entering into a very bearish beginning of the week for the euro. It is just getting dominated by all of the currencies currently. So we definitely don't want to bet against the year or with the euro we don't want to buy into the euro right now until we see some um, some buyers come back into the market to support that type of a position okay again we've seen this in multiple currency pairs now against the swiss franc so this is what i'm talking about as far as it being a bit of a puzzle that you want to put together in the mornings just a little like a sudoku puzzle where you know if you put everything out front, you know, on if you if you're looking at all of them from a bird's eye view, you can tell which ones are strong, which ones are weak currently in the moment. Right now, currently the Swiss franc is going to be the weakest of our pairs next to the euro, and so what we want to do is we want to look at the euro Swiss franc, and you can see that's basically they're at loggerheads there. They're they're. They, they're jockeying for strength. Neither one can overtake the other. And so right now, we've got uh, both of those pairs basically being our bottom two, Euro and the Swiss franc. So we do not want to, 
take a long position against either one of those until we see them start to reverse in the market. Again, here's the Swiss franc getting crushed by the Kiwi. Okay, so if we're looking at any Swiss franc pairs, that's what we're gonna wanna look at. US dollar very much crushing it. And then, you know, we don't see very much other else movement, excuse me, much other movement for the dollar. So even though it's very strong on, in the index, the Swiss franc is the only one that it's really pushing back against the Swiss, the yen, it's just, uh, you know, the yen, the CAD, just going sideways. Okay, so it's not a, it's not, you know, like if you were dealing with variables as a programmer, it's not a global variable, meaning it, it doesn't have the same effect against everything. It just has a very localized effect against a specific other weak currency, which would be the franc. So even though we're seeing this big spike, we're not seeing that also play out against the other currencies as they're very much holding their own against the dollar right now. And that leads us to gold. Yes, yes, gold. Again, we're still in this range. Okay, we've taught, we talked about this for quite a few days now, weeks, in fact, but we've been in this range for a while. Now, this is about a 250, 300 pip range. So again, there's, there's room to make money in here, but you're not going to want to do it in the middle. Okay, and we'll talk about that when we look at the Renko pair it, itself, but you're not going to want to try and trade this in the middle. We talked yesterday about maybe taking this long if market structure held, but market structure did not hold. You can see that right here during the New York session where we were talking about it, it then consolidated for the rest of the day and then started to turn bearish with some very nasty spikes coming in in London. Okay. And this is the reason why we don't try and guess where the market is going. We just look at what is happening and make objective trade decisions based on that, not on emotion or off of a uh, crystal ball or off prognostication. You're just trading what the market is showing you in front of you. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at, uh, oh, this, is, this is classic. So fair warning, if any of you are having this issue, this popped up about 10 minutes before I jumped on the live with you guys and I'll have to get in touch with them to see what's going on but I believe OVO is having an issue with their servers because I have a lifetime license. You know, of course, they're all lifetime licenses for the Renko pairs, but their server is kicking back a, uh, a demo license warning. So if you see that pop up on my screen, yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm looking into that as well. I don't think it'll interfere with our, um, with, uh, with our trade room this morning. But we shall see. We shall see. So here's a great example of uh, here is a great example of the RTM trade that we took yesterday. Okay, so hopefully you guys were able to catch that. I posted that in the group uh, right as it was hitting take profit as well. Um, where did any of you guys catch that? But did you guys take that trade with me yesterday? Uh, I'm talking to the students here in the uh, in the live room for those of you that are on Facebook. But uh, yeah, this was a very, very straightforward one. This is one of those where it ended up going to the other side of the channel. You know, we can never tell which ones are going to do that. We're just looking for that median trade. And it was a nice little 35, 40 pip trade. Excellent. Oh, look at that. I'm getting tons of yeses in the, in the room, which uh, it does my heart, does my heart good. Because that's what I'm hoping for is that you guys are going to be able to catch these right along with me. So again, real easy way to start the week off with some positive pips. Um, nothing else really played out. Okay, that was good divergent trade. But again, we had EuroCAD that continued to push down and we knew the CAD was very strong yesterday. So we, you know, we weren't going to play that unless we saw the proper setup. Okay. Um, yeah, back here. Let me get this off. Okay. Well, again, we had single peak that did not end up playing out. Um, we were actually we were here. Okay. And this one, again, it's like, unless we get it outside of the channel, and this is a very big reason why we don't want to take these unless they're at least 50% outside of the channel. Uh, and that one ended up consolidating. This one did not make a double bottom. This one ended up giving us basically, um, you know, a little lightning bolt pattern that then continued on up. It was not divergent. And so we did not take that one. Okay, but some good trades, good trades for sure. Now let's take a look at I've already kind of 
run through the RTM setups. So let's just look at the ones that are currently active um, or playing out, and then we'll jump right into the levels trades so that it'll be a little less time consuming. We can spend a little more time in the actual levels and uh, RTM, or excuse me, the uh, EMA setups. Yeah, see, that's just really, really weird why it's doing that. All right. Um, okay, so we have this on Swiss franc yen. All right now, this is another one where it looks very divergent, but we have a, a very small pullback. And when we have that, that's more of a false pullback. Two pit, again, two bricks. I never consider two bricks a pullback unless it's under very extenuating circumstances, unless we have a lot of confluence in the other direction. So, um, yeah, this we would consider just a single peak. I know we have a good double bubble and you know it's giving us a fairly divergent setup, but I wanna see where this leads to. This has a very high probability of making a, pushing down even further and making a third peak. Um, so don't be in a rush to jump into these setups unless they are extremely solid. Next one is going to be, uh, I was looking at Euro Audi. Let's take a look at that. There we go, uh, Euro AUD. So this one, beautiful pullback. There we've got a nice four brick pullback. So if we get a push and get a double bottom, or in this case, we're gonna need a better than double bottom. We're gonna need it to go just maybe one or two bricks lower. Um, we've got beautiful divergence already starting to set up. So what we'll wanna do, we'll wanna put an alert on this one and uh, keep a close eye. This could definitely set up for us in, the, in this session. Okay, let's take a, <laughs> see what I mean? There's gotta be, so this, this has to be an issue with the, uh, the Renko, with Ovo themselves. I'm, I'm gonna put in a support ticket after we're done with this live stream, but I, I'm getting the, the feeling that they're probably getting swamped with support tickets right now. Because if it's happening to me, then it's probably definitely happening to other people. Um, Euro JPY, so this is one that I uh, had set, uh, we entered in, sorry, excuse me, let me reset. This is one that I entered into about 10 minutes prior to us jumping on, and it was actually a pending order that just got activated. So if you wanna go ahead and enter into EJ, Euro JPY, it's at the perfect, I mean, we couldn't have timed this better, at a perfect entry point right now. Um, let's do our risk to reward. So we're entering into here. We're going to do about a 25 pip stop, which is absolutely uh, just beautifully tight. You know, no, no extra pips being wasted on that stop loss. Very small risk for a possible 35 pip um, take profit level. Okay, so really straightforward. Um, this one's already been activated. So let me go ahead and set my take profit now that it's been activated. We'll just do a random 35 pipper and just adjust it accordingly. You wanna set it just a little bit below because it will fluctuate just slightly as that trade plays out. Yes, thank you, Ovo. Okay, so we've got Euro JPY. Um, another one I wanted to show you that in more of a uh, don't trade this type of a setup, okay, these type of small little pullbacks here, okay, they need to be outside of the channel. I have some people, some of the newer traders taking these trades where the peaks are happening in between the white and the blue. It's not enough. First of all, it's not overstretched enough. It's not oversold enough to give you the momentum that you're gonna need off of a divergent trade to really to go all the way back to the median. Um, you're gonna see it just kinda you know, fluctuate or consolidate and chop unless you have that push and that pull from the buyers and the sellers. The divergence is what gives us kind of the inside look as to when like one side is still pushing, but they don't have the volume or the money to back it up. And that just means eventually they're gonna get pushed back against. That's gonna be a big push, a big retracement, and that's our counter trend trade. That's how we set up RTM trades. Okay, very straightforward. Uh, that one is not a setup, and that's what I, I like to point out good setups and bad, bad setups alike so that you can know the difference. Because it's, uh, it's one thing to know 
a good setup when you see it. It's even more important to know a bad setup when you see it so that you don't get stuck in them. Okay, we have GF here. This is a pending order, and this is the last one we'll look at today. This is the only ones that I saw that have really good potential. Um, this is a, was a pending order simply because I knew I was going to come back and look at this in about five minutes. Okay, we usually don't use pending orders, but I do have a sell stop put in place here. This is a uh, not too bad of a trade, right? If we can get the reversal here, it's decent divergence. And we're nice, we're outside, we're oversold or overbought, you know, we're outside of the channel. Okay, so we could see a very nice little snap back. And uh, again, another good setup, another good way to start the week. Put a, you know, you could grab two or three of these, right? And if you just did that, two or three of these trades a week, uh, you know, of course, so, so long as you won them all, obviously, um, which you're not, you're not going to win all of them. But, look, you know, if you grabbed two or three a week and maybe two played out, you know, you're getting about 60, 70 pips there, uh, depending on how much you lost on the third one. I'm getting too down, way too far down the rabbit hole. I'm basically saying you can add two or three of these on a week and – Sometimes that could carry you through an entire week of not catching any other trades or having trades that haven't completely played out. You know, add another 60, 70 pips to your bottom line. Every trading account can use that. And these are very, very simple and easy as the students will definitely tell you. Let's take a, oh, hold on one second. Um, so we have, I want to make sure I answer questions as we go along. Um, choo, 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 choo. I had to, had to re-download the key. Well, it's not a key that you have to download. I mean, it's just the, it's an at you and you have the activation key that you paste into the actual thing, but I'll, I'll check it out. I'll definitely check it out, Marco. Um, now for Diane, where is my sell stop? My sell stop's right here. It, it, this, is a, this is a sell stop, but you can see over here, this is not an active order. This is a pending order that has not been activated. It, it will get activated when or if price drops down through that level. And then of course that's a pending stop loss as well. Okay, and very easy to set, you just find the level. Like say I wanted to set a sell stop right here at this level, I get lined up, you know, right click, boom. No, well, I don't wanna be on the bubbles. And I can choose buy limit or go here into trading and choose sell stop. And it's going to do whatever your current one click setting is, okay? So yeah, it's right there. And you can see right here on the price line, the actual price, 1.2084. Okay. All right, let's, uh, oh, we got another, another one. Um, we long on EJ simply because it's counter trend and divergent, because I know you said avoiding long on any Euro pair. Correct. So when we're looking at that, when we're talking about uh, going long or short on pairs, we're, we're looking at the, like the long-term trending trade setup. Now we can go against pairs when we're doing RTM setups because they are counter trend by nature. So we're looking for that pullback, um, knowing that it can just be a quick pullback that then ends up moving and continuing in that direction. So on that, let's talk about this real quick. Oh, I can't even, okay, that's great. Um, so, on this, I don't have uh, the annotate tool, unfortunately, but RTM trades can do one of two things, okay? They'll do one of two things and they'll always do one of two things. They'll either, and this is off of a successful trade. So if we get a successful RTM trade that pulls back to the median, it's gonna do one of two things. It's either gonna then continue on down and become a trend reversal. And this will be a peak point to where now we have a trend in place and we can start looking for that uh, uh, short, we can start looking for more and more actually long-term short trades, or it's going to continue and it's gonna be a trend continuation and it's, it'll be basically just a pullback, hits our TP and then continues on in the main direction. And that's what we would be looking for in, in today. A rally, which is counter to the strength that it's currently showing, but then once that rally is over, it'll be very short-lived, which is just where we'll take our profit from and then the trend will usually continue. Um, and when it comes to like CHF, 
that's definitely what we'd be looking at today. We want CHF to rally, even though it's super weak. We want to have this, you know, a nice little surge of counter trend traders trying to push the needle in the opposite direction. And then we'll, we'll jump out before that ship, you know, before that ship sinks, we'll be like, take our profit, jump in the lifeboat. And now we're, we're in the same direction as everybody else. Uh, good question. Though. Definitely good question. Uh, all right. No worries, Justin. We will, uh, we'll see you on the, on the recording. Um, okay. So let's go ahead and get started with our one, two, three setups. It's so interesting. I double checked the key too, right before I jumped on, like I checked the key, reinstalled it, reinstalled the indicator, still did that. So when it had, you know, just from being from an IT background, it usually means uh, there's something going on on the server side, the authentication server that's authenticating the keys. Um, so, you know, if you guys have that issue too, let me know. See if it's a global thing or if they just don't like the way that we crush the markets anymore. <laughs> like you, you're cheating. You can't, uh, you can't do that. All right, let's start scrolling through these. If anybody has any questions about what, well, um, any specific pair, please let me know. We'll go over it. If you have a specific question, please let me know and we'll go over it. Um, otherwise I'm just going to start skimming through these pairs to see if we have any type of, uh, high probability setup that might be forming. Okay. We're dealing with, we're still dealing with that 200 when it comes to these Audi pairs, but you can see we're getting close to breaking through. We broke through here, Swiss franc being extremely weak as it is, um, but the rest of these pairs are still struggling at the 200. A, AUD NZD is broken through, um, so we might, we might keep an eye on that. Now, this was a nice little break, but we never got that EMA cross to actually start hunting for a pullback, which is a shame because this pulled back right there beautifully to that 50 and that 200. And if it wasn't for the fact, again, that those two, or that the uh, these EMAs just didn't cross ever, that's, it's one of those ones where you just got to stick to your rules. Any other circumstance, I would take that trade every single time. But without the EMAs crossing, you just it's just one of those ones where you have to stick to your to your rule set. I'm trying to start looking at some other ones. All right. No, thank you. All right, we've got a good breakout of CAD Swiss franc. If we can get a pullback on that, we might have a possible entry. A lot of chop there. Same with Swiss franc yen. This will be an interesting one because both of these currencies are, you know, out to lunch today. <clears throat> the, uh, the franc being extremely weak and the yen still being on holiday. So we could see just a lot of consolidation with this, or we could see the, the yen still dominate Swiss franc if it's really that weak. Euro AUD, again, we continue to sell this because this has just been in a downtrend since as long as I can remember. Okay, this continues to trend downwards. And so while it's continuing to trend downwards, let's continue to sell it until we see something different pop up, right? Just trade what you see in front of you in the market. Okay, and so we have a good possibility of getting a nice little 50 to 61.8 tap here. And that's what we'll look for. Right along with the 36, get a little bit of a pullback. And uh, Euro AUD, we can continue to sell that as the Australian dollar is still strong. The Euro, again, was one of our very weak pairs. And so selling it just makes sense. Just, just the, the common sense thing to do. Same with Euro CAD. And we've got our pivot points. Our impulse leg has been formed. So let's keep an eye out for that retracement as well. Beautiful little zone set up right there in between the 50 and the 60, 1.8. 
Uh, no levels really to consider. So for now, we'll just stick with your, our EMAs. All right. And let's look at the rest here. So you're a Swiss franc again, Swiss franc being just not a very good. This is a very tight range. Let's see, let's measure this out, even though it's Swiss franc. Okay, so here was that impulse leg we were talking about yesterday. And this one went, again, this is full round trip here. So what, again, for those that don't know what we mean by full round trip, you know, you start off, everything looks good and it just retraces, comes right back and takes you out sometimes for a loss. Most times, hopefully, for zero profit, zero loss, because uh, your stop loss should be at break even at that point. But yeah, classic example going full round trip there. Not much we could do about that, but we did take the RTM trade, and that's uh, that was the that's a good part on that. Okay. Good trend. What we need is a pullback on this one as well. We would consider this whole thing the impulse leg. I know we've got a little bit of a chop here and there, but this is also the one that we're looking at as far as the uh, uh, an EMA or an RTM trade. So if we get that pullback off the RTM setup, then that could give us the ability to trade it going both ways. Okay, so if we get that RTM pulls back to a solid level, I mean, Fibonacci level, not, not a golden level. Um, then yeah, this, we can catch this going up as our counter trend trade. And then again, as it turns into a trend continuation, that's where we'll look for our long-term entry and trade opportunity. Euro NZD continues to drop. You just want to keep looking for entries there. Right now it's just very sideways. Euro USD breaking through. All right, let's take a look at this. These are some of my favorite setups because you see how the 36 is curling under the 200, price is curling under the 200. So our retracement might get the resistance of the 200 as well. And look at that, it all is lining up very well right here. If this pivot point holds, this lower low, this swing low, definitely look for that pullback. <coughs> yeah, and then here is where we would enter and short this. And so we're playing into both of the things that we were looking at earlier. We're looking at Euro weakness and we were looking at USD um, I, I want to, I don't want to say strength because it's not as strong as it looks like kind of a false strength behind the USD, but it, whatever the market needs to push it further down. Um, yeah, that's, Hey, that's perfect. Um, so yeah, we definitely want to look for that on EU. Let's keep going. All right. A lot of the GBP pairs are breaking through that 200. That's beautiful. Too much of a pullback on this one. This one's definitely going to hit that 78, 88 Fibonacci level. It's too far back. Uh, when we get some, when you get a deep retracement like that, it has, it does have a possibility. There is, it has the probability of, you know, playing out, continuing to drop, you know, reversing this being just a pullback and playing out as a nice short trade, but it has a higher probability of 
of just continuing in this direction or getting stalled out at the 200. Okay, and that's what we're doing. We're playing probabilities. It has a higher probability of continuing back up than it does of reversing and continuing down until we see how it reacts at the 200. And even then, it's not a EMA setup. Okay, so a little bit of a catch-22 there, but the bottom line is there's nothing, even though it looks very enticing, there was nothing for us to trade at that point in time. All right, G, the, G, you moving very sideways. Again, the first thing you want to do is look for a trend. Don't want to try and look for setups in a choppy, ranging, or consolidating market. Okay, we just want to look for nice trend-based trades, trade with that greater amount of money, you know, trade with those big players. Um, the major player is who we want to be trading with and not trying to pick out these little small, uh, you know, whiplash movements that are happening in consolidation. Now, New, New Zealand JPY. So we've got a possible level set up here. We've got nice rejection happening here. Uh, if we can get a secondary level to form, We've got about 50 pips, you know, in theory, depending on where this reverses at, to the 200. That's enough to get enough equity built up into the trade to where you could move this to break even um, until it gets through that 200 EMA. Once it gets through that, then we would know we'd have more room to the upside. If we look at it from the 120, we're right there right now. We're on that 200. So. If it can get through this and then through the 200 on the lower brick frame, so it gets through this, it get, this is what might cause the, the retracement, right? This one might, might cause the pullback to give us a secondary level. And then it's gonna need to get through both these. So that's gonna lower the probability that it's gonna be able to do that. If it's got both these 200s kind of pinning it in between these two, between this daily level and these two dynamic levels of resistance, it, it's going to be kind of it's going to be difficult for this pair to break out of that. So we almost might want to wait until we see the breakout and then trade that once it's gone. Again, it's going to depend on your style as a trader. Both those options are open to you. If you want to be aggressive, you can take that first pullback to a secondary level. If you want to be conservative, you'd wait for that to play out, break through the 200 EMAs, and then look for a pullback entry. Okay, That's if you're more of a, of a wait and see type of trader, which I, I tend to fall into that category after having traded for so long. I don't, I don't do a lot of aggressive trading anymore. I just don't see the profit in it anymore. It's... And you, you have to, you, you kind of have to ask yourself, what's the, um, you know, what's the, what's the reward for being an aggressive trader, right? So look, we'll talk about that in just a sec. Let's get through the rest of these, um, the rest of these uh, charts. And while we're waiting, I tell you what, for those of you that are in the live room right now, I want you to give me your best. It doesn't, there's no right or wrong answer, okay? It's all gonna be opinion. I just wanna know in your mind, you know, what the answer would be, you know, how the inner workings of your mind. In a couple of in a couple words or a, or a short sentence, tell me what is the advantage or what is the, re, I don't wanna say advantage, there's no advantage to it. What's the reward for you personally as a trader to trade aggressively, okay? And again, it's not a right or wrong answer. I'm really wanting us to take a look at this so you can kind of maybe open your eyes to see a little bit more about aggressive versus conservative. But just give me a quick answer as to, for you personally as a trader, what is the, the and I'm not benefit, not advantage, what's the reward that you get personally for trading aggressively? Let me know. Um, let's get go and then I'll, I'll take a look at them as soon as we finish the rest of these.
So on this one, the, the pullback's not going to be enough. It's going to struggle here at the 200. So let's wait for this to drop down a little bit further. A lot of chop and consolidation going on here. So we don't want to get stuck in that little quagmire for sure. And then that leads us to gold. Let's take a, a little bit of a look at gold and then we'll talk, um, then we'll talk about trading. So we were looking at this yesterday. Okay, we had had this movement and we were right about to here. Okay, and again, we had this demand zone that played out beautifully, but we pointed out the fact that we are still stuck inside this little range which ends right about up here, okay? So this one's a little bit wider. Here, we have about 500 pips or so, depending on where you're taking it from. But what we're looking at is, one, that gold should be moving up eventually. And two, we don't want to do that. We don't want to start taking those trades until we see market structure back in place. Okay, we have strong daily support. We have strong, we had strong four hour support. Now we're looking at four hour resistance. So it's giving us that, that consolidation. It's giving us that, um, that range that it still has not broken out of. And it's being supported by our support and resistance indicators because we have a, a differencing of opinion on trend. We have a, our major trend being buy, our minor trend being sell. And the idea was until it breaks either above this or below this, don't take any positions at all. Okay. And that still holds true today. This chop is going to chew up your account if you're trying to catch either long or short trades in either direction. This right here, again, it's about a 200 pip range. So you've got some room to move, but it's going to be so choppy that your trade, you know, your, your wins and your losses are basically going to cancel each other out, if not put you into the negative. We need to wait for breaks above or below institutional levels of support and resistance to show us a clear trend has emerged before we want to start taking positions on gold. So after what happened with the dollar today, here we go. After what happened with the dollar today, yeah, we're going to want to wait and see how that affects gold because it's been having an inverse, it's supposed to have an inverse correlation on gold, but it's having a very, um, positive correlation, which is a little bit odd, a little bit odd when it comes to gold. So we, let's hold off on gold today. I don't see any real trading opportunities on that, again, until it breaks um, above or below some of these levels of support or resistance, some of these supp the supply or demand zone. Because until we get a, a, a consecutive pattern of higher highs and higher lows, or lower highs and lower lows, again, it's going to be death by a thousand paper cuts for your account. Okay, so for the sake of your account, I would sit on the guideline, the sidelines of gold just for today. Okay, let's take a look at some of the, uh, some of the answers and then we'll talk about, um, and we'll talk about that a little bit. Now that we've basically had, we've basically gone through all of our pairs. We've got an idea of what we wanna start looking for as we go forward into um, today's trading. All right. So we've got basically a game plan in place. We've got some setups that we're looking for that we'll be actively hunting. We've got other setups that, um, are basically already starting to play out. Okay. There are RTM trades. We're already, we're into one already. And then we'll take a look and see if that, um, that sell stop pending order has been activated as well. Take a look at that. And while we do that, we'll finish up. We'll talk a little bit about, um, We'll talk a little bit about, yes, yes, yes. 
So not yet, but we're still waiting on that. Well, so we'll talk about risk versus reward. And the reason that I mention it, I, I just, I'm coming to the end of a really good book that I've been reading. I, you know, I'm always trying to expand my knowledge, especially when it pertains to trading or whatever we're doing um, at the time, you know, mindset, uh, psychology, I'm a big proponent that your trading psychology is a much larger chunk of your trading than most people will give it credit for. So if you can get a kind of a hold on that, you'll have a much, I don't want to say easier time because trading will never be easy, but it'll help you understand why you do certain things that you do. So let's take a look. Um, let's see. Oh, we got a completely different question. Uh, so the reward for being an aggressive trader. For Marco, it would be just the possibility of higher or faster profit rewards. I, why, Mark, why are you answering a question with a question? I don't know. You tell me. You're the one answering. <laughs> um, like taking higher leverage positions, less patient entries, much more risk. Um, but I think just the potential of higher and faster rewards drives that aggression. Yeah, good. That's a good answer. As you, you'll, you'll hear a lot, a lot of people. Um, fast profit, more risk. Um, okay. Uh, let's see here. Oh, is it your, your GVP is up 18 pips already. Well, I like to hear about that too. So this one has not activated yet. We'll jump back on that. We'll take a look at, uh, EJ. Love it when a plan comes together. Okay. So the reason that I ask, um, and really quickly, the question of uh, Ronaldo had a question, is it possible to implement patterns like pennants, rectangles, flags into the Renko strategy? Yeah, uh, I mean, not directly with any strategy per se, but yeah, one of the main reasons for using Renko's is because it takes what we learn in price action and then takes all the noise out of the chart and anything that you learn in price action, you can absolutely learn, um, apply in Renko's. Uh, it's just another type of a chart, but it's just a cleaner chart. So you can look for your um, triangle patterns, which we do all the time. You know, Ronaldo, you've seen me draw pa uh, triangle patterns on Renko's uh, showing like uh, consolidation squeezes. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, your double bottoms, double tops, absolutely. Uh, head and shoulders, inverted head and shoulders, absolutely. Um, you know, some of the uh, lesser known ones, you know, like I'm never a big fan of pennants and wedges and things like that. I just don't. I'm not, I don't think they play out very often, so I don't rely on them personally for my trading. But whatever you can do in price action, you absolutely can do in Renko's. Yes, for sure. Um, other than, other than like looking for massively long wicks, you know, because you know we don't we don't get wicks on these. Uh, oh yeah, we were looking at Euro JPY. Okay. Um, oh, okay. Like. I guess, Marco, you're looking at a different one. That's all good. All uh, right, let's, or maybe it pulled back. Yeah, we never know. We'll keep an eye on this for now. So let's talk about uh, risk versus reward versus reward, okay? And so the reason why I asked, again, I was, I'm reading a book on habit forming. It's a, very, it's a very good book. I highly recommend it. It's called The Power of Habit. Um, I was reading it mainly to uh, try and improve, you know, I'm always working on my procrastination as much of a go-getter as I am. I still struggle with not getting things done daily that I need to do, you know, making a solid schedule, all that. I mean, I'm very scatterbrained. Sometimes I'll respond to people like in five minutes and other times I'll, I'll not, I'll put it off and then I'll forget. And then three days later, they're like, you know, Hey, what's up? And it's cause I'm completely scatterbrained. So, I was reading this, it's called Power of Habit, talks about how we enter this habit cycle, how habits are formed, how habits are, you know, this and that. And one of the things that it talks about is that, you know, the, the way that habits form, and this happens in trading, and that's what made me realize, oh, this happens in trading and we don't subconsciously know it, or we don't consciously know it, it all happens subconsciously. And I want you guys to just think about this as you go into your trading for the rest of the week, just food for thought, that we are programmed neurologically to seek a reward, to crave a reward, right? Um, if we don't get that reward, we tend not to form a habit. But if we do get a reward, 
we tend to really ingrain that habit. And it's one of the worst habits that you can start off with as a trader. And that's that adrenaline dopamine rush of getting into a trade, of the risk of it, you know, the excitement of taking a trade. And this is one of the reasons why most traders have a hard time transitioning from demo into a live account is because when it, it's live, it's real. You don't get a reward anymore. You get a negative consequence, which is you get dread. You get worry because now you're worried that your money is going to lose. When you're playing demo, it's like playing Call of Duty. It, it's a game, right? It's a game. You may win, you may lose, but it's just fun getting in there and taking these trades with zero accountability, zero risk. And that sets off this chain of events that programs your brain to seek aggressive trading behavior, okay? It's true. It's science. It's, it's, it, it's science, bitches. Um, so I want you guys to take note of that. So that's the reason why I asked you guys, is, you know, what is the reward that you get from uh, trading? Because it does not benefit your account at all. Aggressive trading does not benefit your account. It actually hurts your account. So why do most people aggressively trade compulsively? Because it's, they, they're, they're still gambling. They're still treating it like gambling. And gambling is a rush. Why would people go to Vegas when they know that they will always, 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 except for maybe the top, top, top 0.001%, everybody else loses with no money or leaves with no money. So why would you get excited about knowing that you're just going to give your money away because all the lights and the excitement and the thrill of gambling, that's what you're paying for. You're paying for just that little endorphin rush of gambling, even though you know, eh, you know you're, you're probably not going to win any money, but that you could. It's that possibility that you could win money that keeps you coming back. But I just want you guys to think about that, that there, there's no reward to your account to aggressively trading. You're just rewarding your dopamine center. And again, when people transition over to live trading, that goes away. And that's why a lot of people then end up falling off and you know deciding that trading isn't for them because it's not fun anymore. When it stops being fun, that's when you start to realize whether or not this is really something that you want to do. You know, this is really an, an endeavor that you want to commit a good four or five years of your life to, to perfecting, to building an account, to building up a nest egg, um, and then to eventually crossing over into becoming a full-time trader. And then knowing that you're going to need to continue to do that on and on and on. So you have to reprogram your brain to find pleasure in the patience of holding trades in watching trades uh the way one of the ways that i crossed that barrier without really knowing it at the time was i got addicted to watching trades grow and grow and grow like seeing that pip counter can like every day seeing it go up and up and up and when it when i would lose it would be uh you know it would be crushing and i not i would just be like a little bit depressed about it but I was excited to try and get back into another trade that had really long-term potential. And the, the longer that I held the trades, the more I enjoyed it. Like the, the, the more of, a, of a, you know, a, a feeling of accomplishment I was getting by building up these very large trades um, over days or weeks. And so the addiction to the fast-paced, you know, lights and bells and whistles of scalping and uh, doing very aggressive trading was replaced by the reward of the sense of accomplishment of holding trades in a professional and like being like crossing that oh, that threshold into no this is how professional traders trade and i'm doing that and that means that i'm becoming a professional trader and that like gave me this ex like that extreme sense of pride so it's like the difference between Yes, uh, you know, ho-hos and ding-dongs and, uh, you know, Cinnabon, that will give you a great temporary feeling of, you know, satisfaction when you eat it, but then you feel like shit afterwards, kind of like, you know, aggressive trading. It feels great when you're doing it, but then when you lose, it feels horrible, as opposed to going and joining a gym 
and starting a, you know, a workout routine that you know is going to take you months and months and months, but that every day that you do a workout, you get that sense of accomplishment that you're like one step closer to your goal. Okay. So I just wanted you guys to just think about that food for thought that you're, you know, you might have already formed an addictive habit without even knowing it. And if that's the case, take the opportunity now to start trying to reverse that and recognizing when you're trading just because you want that little, that little hit of Forex heroin, or if you're actually taking this trade because you're setting up a foundation for long-term profits. Does that make sense to everybody? Does everybody kind of get where I'm going with that? Good book. Oh, you've read the book, Matt? Yes, it is an excellent book. It's an excellent book. If you want to train yourself how to do things that you don't want to do now, gives you a beautifully simplistic blueprint for you set up a, a cue that initiates the uh, action that you want to do. You do the action and then you set up a reward for it. And then eventually your, bot, your mind starts craving that reward before you even do the activity. That's when you've got a habit set in. So if you find yourself craving you know, wanting to get in and take a, a, a trade and you're not even in front of the charts, that means that you've really dug into that, that habit and it's time to start digging yourself out. Okay. Um, yes. And I, I would recommend it to everybody. Yes, definitely read that book. Um, let me see if I can pull it up. I'll just pull up a quick, <clears throat> a quick Google, Google image for you just to show you which one I'm talking about. Uh, Definitely get it off of Amazon for cheap. There it is right there. Boom. Power of habit. Why we do what we do in life and in business. Great, great book. Highly recommend it. To, if, if you've got to some time, <laughs> if you're sitting at home and you've got time to kill, I don't know if that's any of us. All right, guys. Uh, yep. Trading's kicking off right now. Everything's going into full swing. So I'm going to jump into these charts and start looking for some, uh, some trades. I don't know about you guys, um, but yeah. That's it for today's room. Thanks to everybody who joined me. Uh, looks like we've got Quentin in the house. What's going on, Quentin? Uh, thanks to everybody who joined me this morning. So if you guys need anything, you know where to find me. If you'd like to learn how to trade Renko's like we do, message me directly or go to the website, www.zenfxtrading.com. Um, and you can see our Renko course listed there as well as our price action course. And we do these trade rooms every day in the New York session with the Renko students. So, I mean, I don't know anybody else that does that, but we do it because, hey, I like to go above and beyond for all of my students and the students, they can definitely attest to that. All right, guys, take care, stay safe. Okay, we will get through this pandemic. We will get through it. Stay safe, stay together, practice your social distancing, and I will see all of the students, same time, same place tomorrow morning bright and early. If you have any questions, make sure you message me directly either in here on Facebook or in our Discord channel. All right, take cake. Uh, bleh, bleh, uh, clutch, choked it. Take care, guys. Have a great day.